Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to our play-by video of Eldritch Horror The Dreamlands where we are still taking on Atlatch Natcher the Dreamweaver and we're about to start turn 8 but just before we do we've got a couple of corrections to make No! Yes I made a couple of errors I'm afraid but they were actually against us so uh, I'm rather glad to correct these because it gives us a better chance in the game. The first one was actually a research encounter error. If you recall, Mandy did a clairvoyance spell and she picked up a clue, did a research encounter, funky. Except because she was on Ulthar, I read the city research encounter and picked up a clue that was actually a sea space, which was uh, space three. So I should have actually read the sea space encounter, but I didn't. I read the city encounter. So in order to correct that, I'm going to put clue three back on space three. And I'm going to take clue 20 instead, which is Jakarta, which is a city. So we did a city encounter and we've got a city clue. So that fixes that. The other thing is regarding the mystery. Now, while I was going through it, I did mention that we actually had to put health from what we'd got on Leng Spiders onto the card. And you get four health on the card and you solve the mystery. Now, during last turn, I did mention that we couldn't put the three health that Tommy inflicted on a Leng Spider onto the card because it wasn't an Otherworld encounter and it wasn't a Dream Quest encounter. But that is incorrect. That was just the first paragraph on the actual mystery. And all that first paragraph means is it's just to guarantee that you will encounter a Leng Spider. Otherwise, you could spend several turns without bumping into one. So that bit of text in that paragraph is just to ensure that you can be in a situation where you do encounter one. If you actually read the second paragraph, it says whenever a Leng Spider monster loses health. So even if you encounter it in a different way, like Tommy did, you can actually put any defeated health of that Leng Spider onto this card. So we did get an extra three health on this card, which brought it up to four, because if you remember, we had an advance the mystery. So we have got four health on this card. So we have completed the mystery. So brilliant stuff. So there's the four health, mystery completed, brilliant. Now, what I have had to do though, is off camera I have had to pick the next mystery. The reason for that is because I'm doing play by video and I've got other players, and quite rightly, they needed to know what the next mystery was for this turn. Otherwise, they wouldn't have known what actions to tell me to do. So I did pick this off camera just to let all the other guys know what the actual mystery is. Unfortunately, you're just going to have to take my word for it. It was picked randomly and we got Shroud of the Spider Mother. So let's read this. Atlatch Natcha lurks far below the slopes of Vormin Hadrath. There she weaves her silken shroud, stitching the dreams of the Ancient Ones into folds of reality, heralding the end times of man. After an investigator resolves a research encounter, he may spend one clue gained from that encounter to place that clue on this card. At the end of the Mythos phase, if there are clues on this card equal to the number of investigators, we will solve this mystery. So, Shroud of the Spider Mother is our new mystery. We'll put that over here. So, there we have the corrections for turn Let's find seven. out what happened previously on the Dreamlands. Mandy had returned from her meeting with Dana to her lodgings where she put herself to work collating all her information. Talking with Gloria, Randolph and Tommy, Mandy was beginning to see that there was little time to waste. Gloria had shown Mandy a stone tablet that she had partially deciphered. Cross-referencing the sigils and glyphs upon it, Mandy realised that it was a key to a dimensional gate. Gloria had happily let Mandy take it, and Mandy had used it right then and there. She had placed herself on a large sofa, and using the tablet she was able to send her ethereal self back to Earth. There was a portal above Sydney. Mandy could also sense that a huge monster was lurking beneath the waters of the harbour. 
By using the tablet, Mandy had managed to shut the gate, stranding it. Mandy was not finished. After a short night's rest, she once again used her clairvoyant spell. Using a polished metal tray in her room, Mandy was able to travel to the ether once more. This time she had found a way back to a vast, dark cavern. In the half-light, she saw an old, bloated spider feeding listlessly upon a corpse. The obese monstrosity could barely move. Mandy was able to approach and siphon some of the magical energy that was leaking from its spinnerets. As she did so, the spider tried to turn, but it was slow, and in doing so, it nudged the corpse it was feeding on. Mandy saw that the body was holding a piece of parchment. Concentrating hard, she envisioned in her mind that she had picked it up. Then she allowed her ethereal form to be drawn back to Ulthar. Jerking awake, she saw that the parchment that she had sought to take lay upon the polished metal tray before her. Gloria and Randolph were visiting a local museum when they came across a mysterious codex. They convinced the curator to flip a few of its pages, promising that they wouldn't actually touch it. As they read some of the pages, Gloria noticed a passage about the spider mother and a flaw in her children. This would help them if they would have to defeat the spider young from Leng. Randolph could put a few passages together and he stated that he thought that another crack in the dream realms may be in Shanghai, China. Gloria laughed and said they were a bit far from there. They thanked the curator and returned to walking around the city. A couple of days later, as they walked through a merchant bazaar, they noticed a crowd of the Ulthar cats surrounding what Gloria had heard was called a zoog. It was an ugly little rat-like creature. Randolph was going to walk past when Gloria thought it might be to their benefit to try and get on the cat's good side. She offered to question the thing, and the cats moved aside a little, and Gloria began to ask a question when the creature leapt at her face. Gloria had expected this, and she dodged out of the way. When the zoo landed on the ground, the cats pounced on it. Gloria stepped away as they ripped it apart. As Gloria and Randolph walked away, she thought she heard the cats laughing at her. That's the last time I help a cat, she said, reaching for a cigarette. Zoe found herself in another dream. She was surrounded by a city of people who called themselves Yithians. Yes, they were Yithians. A man approached her. Are you real? he asked. I think I'm in a dream, Zoe responded. The other Yithians didn't seem to notice her. Don't pay them any attention, the man said, waving his hand. I don't think they can see you, just me. He paused and cocked his head, as if listening to a voice that Zoe couldn't hear. Yes, I was just getting to that. Another pause. You're here for the secret. Oh, I can tell. Yes, yes. Zoe nodded her head. She didn't really understand why she was here or how she even got wherever here was. The man went on. Yes, I can teach you the secret. I used it in your world against... He dropped his voice to a whisper. Nephron Carr. Zoe didn't know who Nephron Carr was, but she didn't like the feel of the name on her mind. His name was Oppressive. Zoe blacked out again. When she came to, the man was still there, repeating a chant over and over again, looking at her expectantly. Zoe tried to repeat the chant but couldn't vocalise the words. They just wouldn't form correctly. Failure, an angry voice thundered in her mind. Zoe shuddered in pain from the force of the voice. The ringing in her ears grew worse. This is just a dream. Wake up. Why can't I wake up? After purging Ulthar, a period of peace settled over Tommy. He needed the rest, and whilst Mandy and Gloria poured over esoteric tomes and the mysterious tablet, he had an opportunity to do so. Meeting up with Bernard later, he was given great news. The mystery of the tablet had been solved, and the weaver's influence in the real world vanquished. Tommy dreaded to think how the Weaver would be plotting some dreadful, awful retribution against them all. A bizarre opportunity arose for Tommy to carry out a bit of police work. The all-powerful cats of Ulthar wanted peace with the Zoogs of the Enchanted Forest, and Tommy took it upon himself to go forth in the name of order to do so. 
warring cats and furry forest creatures. Sheriff Engel would never believe this. Tommy had seen a captured Zug in Ulthar. It had escaped and attacked Gloria, trying to steal Becky. They had a vicious streak with fanged mouths and a tentacled chin. This could be a challenge. The short journey took Tommy out of Ulthar and into pleasant pastoral lands with thatched houses and farms that Tommy felt was reminiscent of rural England. It brought a sense of peace and calm to Tommy until he crossed into the wood. A horse-sized spider launched itself at him with an ear-splitting shriek. Its fangs raised high in its impatience to end his existence. The weaver must be desperate to send her vile servant so brazenly against him, and Tommy grinned with satisfaction to know he must be more of a threat to the weaver than he had thought. His sword flashed and severed one of its legs, and Tommy rolled to the side as the off-balance beast stumbled in the opposite direction. Tommy knew no fear, only that this beast would be slain, and so he toyed with it, took his time to study this incarnation of the weaver. Each time he injured the beast, its blood emanated magic, and Tommy gleaned some of its power. Eventually the maimed spider could move no more, and Tommy ended it. Walking away, he felt a surge of triumph within him, knowing that another blow had been dealt to the Dark Weaver. And here we are at the action phase with Mandy. What is Mandy going to do? Well, the first thing she's going to do is she is going to gain a focus. So put that on a player tray. And for a second action, she is going to travel. And she's going to take the Uncharted path down here to the underworld because we have a blue constellation gate there and we want to get rid of it. We also want to get rid of the buyer key. So that is where she's going. That's the end of her action phase. Next up, Gloria Goldberg. And here we are with Gloria. First thing Gloria is going to do is she's going to rest, get herself a sanity and a health back. That puts her up to three health and seven sanity. Much needed. For her final action this turn, she too is going to go to the Underworld. So she's going to travel to the Underworld with Mandy. So there we are. We have Gloria and Mandy in the Underworld. Very nice. Next up, it is Zoe Samaras. So let's get up to Cellophais. And here we are with Zoe. First thing Zoe's going to do is she too is going to get a Focus Token. Then she is going to travel because she's going to get the hell out of Dodge because of that goat spawn and that flying polyp. So she is going to go to Unknown Kadath. And that is the end of her action phase. So that leaves one investigator and that is Tommy. He's in the Enchanted Wood. Let's go and see him. And here we are with Tommy. First thing Tommy's going to do is rest because he too is low on health and sanity. This is going to put him up to three health and four sanity. Much needed. And for his final action, he is also going to gain a focus token. So he now has two focus tokens. That is it for Tommy. That is it for the action phase. Next up, the encounter phase. And here we are at the encounter phase with Mandy in the underworld. Well, the first thing she's got to do before she can do anything is get rid of this monster if she can, which is a Bayaki. So, nasty looking beast. So, first thing, we've got a horror check, which is testing Will. Now, her will is appalling. It's at one <laughs> due to us getting an impairment. So we're going to roll a single dice, see what we can do. Come on, Mandy. A five. Brilliant. She's on fire. So we've avoided that. Then we move on to the actual strength test for the combat. Now, she's actually going to use the Dread Curse, which she got last turn. Nice spell. Incantation, when resolving a combat encounter, you may test law, minus two. And if we pass, we'll get eight strength during the encounter, so that'll be nice. So her law is six, because she has the Agent of Secrets. 
minus two is four dice. Whoop. So that's one and get them all in. So we got two successes and we also got the omen of the track. So we've got two successes, a five and a six. Let's flip this over. Resolve the effect based on your test result. Two plus. The unabated power of the demon sultan tears the sky asunder as it rips your foe to shreds. You may spawn one gate to gain plus 12 strength in, in the encounter instead. Then flip this card. It's a beast of a card. But we're not going to do that. We're going to stick with the plus 8, I think. We do not want another gate. And what was not to one? The eyes of the court are upon you. Advance the omen by one unless you discard this card. So that's good to know if we use it again. So we're just going to stick with the plus 8. Thank you very much. As I say, we do not want another gate so plus eight she's got an actual strength herself of one so that'll be nine dice and it is a normal strength test i believe yes so we've got nine dice to get two successes one two three four five six seven eight nine remember we've got <coughs> we've got focus and we've got the magnifying glass And we got three successes anyway. So that's fantastic. The buyer key goes to the bag. Got rid of that. That's good. We didn't have to use the magnifying glass or the focus. So we can use that for our other world encounter because we're now going to try and actually shut this gate. So let's get the other world deck. Here it is. Let's give it a quick shifty and a quick cut and let's see where Mandy is going. Oh no, Leng, the plateau of Leng with the spiders. As you approach the Pharos of Leng, the ground before you cracks open. You see an amorphous black shape slowly bubbling up from the ground. Something about the living mass reminds you of a passage from an ancient tesk, text. Law minus one, just the sort of test we want. So one, two, three, four, five. And we get two successes. So that is excellent. We're on fire. Let's have a look at the pass. Recognising the shape as one of Nyogtha's tendrils, you run to the tower. The strange energies there return you to Earth. Close this gate. Woohoo! When you go, a small piece of Nyogtha tries to go with you. Test observation. Damn. Right. But we've shut the gate. It does say we've shut the gate, so that's good. Put that over here. Brilliant. We've got rid of the gate, but now we've got a test observation. She's got the agent of secrets, so she gets plus one observation from that and a re-roll. And her observation is three, so up to four. So we'll keep those two successes. And we'll get rid of these loser dice and pick two others. Come on. And we get a five. So fantastic. Didn't have to use the magnifying glass or the focus. Yep, we didn't fail. Brilliant. Well done, Mandy. After a very shaky start where she nearly snuffed it, she has come up trumps lately. That is it for Mandy. Next up, it is Gloria. So we may as well stay here. And here we are with Gloria. So we can get rid of these dice because she's still bloody cursed. So let's get rid of those. She's actually going to have a research encounter. So she's going to try and get this clue here. So let's get the research deck. And let's see if we can roll some sixes, baby. Right, let's have a look. We, Underworld is Wilderness. An unfortunate victim is caught in a massive spider web screaming for help. You think you can perform a successful rescue, but stealing away the spider's meal may, may, may drive them into a ravenous frenzy. 
You may advance Doom by one to gain this clue and one random ally asset from the deck because we are so far along and it means that we don't have to roll. We're going to go for this. This is pretty good. So Doom goes down to six. I think it's worth the risk. And we'll get the clue. So Glory has now got two clues. That's brill. And we get a random ally asset from the deck. So here we go. We'll just go through till we get one. Let's give it a shuffle first. Let's give it a shuffle first and a cut. And we'll go through till we get an ally. Whoop. An Arcanist. So straight off the top. When you gain this card from the deck or reserve, gain two spells, then discard one spell. And we can roll one additional die when resolving a law test as part of a spell effect. Excellent. So we've got the Arcanist put in there. And let's get the spell deck. Needless to say, what we don't want is glamour spells. So there we are. A quick cut. And first spell is Alter Fate, which is also on the top. <laughs> oh, bloody glamour. You may trade conditions, focus, improvement tokens and impairment tokens as part of a trade action. Test law and then flip this card. That's not a bad spell, actually. We'll get rid of some impairment tokens. So, Alter Fate. And the next one is Feed the Mind. I think this is... Test Law minus one. If you pass, choose an investigator on your space and improve one skill of his choice. Then flip this card. We're going to take this. The reason we're going to take this is somebody like Gloria, if she wasn't cursed, could cast this and get rid of Mandy's impairments. So we'll use Feed the Mind, mainly because it's not a glamour spell. Yeah, so Feed the Mind is what we'll keep. Try and keep these glamour spells, you know, We'll try and keep them off the table in this particular game. Feed the mind and the Arcanist. Well done, Glow. Gets an encounter. She didn't even have to roll her cursed dice. But we have gone down to six on the Doom track. But I think that will be okay. So that is it for Glow. Which means we can get rid of that research card on the research deck. And we're doing extremely well again. Let's see if we can keep it going with Zoe. Oh, something else to do. We've got something else to do. We have something else to do. Let's have a look at the mystery. Yes, we just got a... Nearly forgot. After an investigator resolves a research encounter, they may spend one clue that they gain from that encounter to place a clue on this card. Well, that's what we're going to do. So let's dig out the Underworld clue. And we have our first clue on the mystery. Brilliant. So yet another reason for actually taking that gamble. We actually advance the mystery as well. Good stuff. Right, so yes, we've got to move up to Zoe. She's up in Unknown Kadath. And here we are with Zoe in Unknown Kadath. She is also going to do a research encounter. So we're going to use this clue here. Well, we're going to try and pick up this clue. So what has she got to do? She needs the re she needs the research encounter deck that we just put away. We'll give it another shuffle, another cut, and we are in another wilderness. You find several hapless men strung up in cocoons and held in place by razor sharp webbing. Gain this clue. Brilliant. You try to free them from captivity. Strength minus one. Her strength is three. And she has a focus. So we'll just leave that there to remind us. So strength minus one, wasn't it? Yes. So we're going to roll two dice. Come on. Come on, Zoe. Whoop. Oh, a four and a three. So what we're going to do is we're obviously going to use the focus and do a re-roll. Come on. 
a four down. But remember, we have gained the clue anyway. We'll get rid of that, which unfortunately couldn't get us a success. But we've been very fortunate with the actual card. Let's just check I've read it right. Yep, we get the clue. The clue is going to go straight on to the mystery. So we've got two clues on the mystery. And let's see what the fail does. Oop. If you fail, the webbing proves stronger than you expected, and you cut yourself many times while freeing the men. Lose two health. Damn. But she's got plenty of health, so she's still got three health left. So that's okay. And she has put a clue on the mystery. Woohoo! So we are fair motoring along. Oh, I've knocked over the cellar face gate. Put it back up. Okay, so that is it for Zoe and her encounter phase. That leaves our friend Tommy, who's just here. So what's Tommy going to do? He's going to do the adventure. So he's got to resolve an enchanted wood encounter, I believe. Let's just check. As an encounter, an investigator on the enchanted wood may search the deck for the enchanted wood dream quest. Sorry and resolve it. Remember, it says resolve. That doesn't mean that we have to pass. We could also fail. Where is the Dream Quest deck? It's here. So, let's give it a, there are a few enchanted wood ones, I think. So, we'll just shuffle and we will go through till we get an enchanted ward. I think that is the enchanted ward. Put that there. I think. Yep, that's the enchanted ward, all right. First one of these we've done, isn't it? So let's have a look. You see three stunningly beautiful individuals some distance off the path. They are sitting around a large stone table drinking wine and you feel compelled to join them despite your better judgment. Oh, Tommy. Tommy chasing skirt. Right, test will minus one. His will is three, I think. Oh no, it's four. So, and he's got two focus. Anything else help him on will? No, but he is still blessed and he's got two focus tokens. So he's going to roll three blessed dice. One, two, three. And he gets two successes. So he didn't need these. So let's have a look at the pass condition. You force yourself to look away, examining the ground instead. Test observation. His observation is three. May as well roll the same three dice. Come on, Tommy. And he gets another success. So we only need one, so no need to re-roll anything. If you pass, you see a treasure discarded by some lost dreamer. Gain one artifact. Brilliant. There's the fail condition, but it doesn't matter because we passed. <laughs> Put that in there. And get the artifact deck. He's done quite well with artifacts, hasn't he? Our friend Tommy. Got himself a sword of St. Jerome, and now he's going to get something else. Do a cut. And he gets... The Book of the Dead. Item Relic Tome. Gain plus two observation and plus two will. Brilliant. Whenever a monster is defeated, gain one clue. Just the thing for Tommy, who is an absolute beast of a killing machine. So he has the Book of the Dead. We have resolved that encounter, so let's have a look at the adventure. After resolving that encounter, he may spend one focus to gain a moxie condition. And whether we spend the focus or not, we complete this adventure. And we will go on to Otherworld of Dreams 4, the Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath. The Onyx Obelisks of Kadath rise in the distance as you make your approach. 
you sense a dark power within its walls, the like of which you have never encountered before. When this card enters play, place an adventure token on unknown Kadath. When this adventure is completed, advance the active mystery by one. Oh, yes. Then the active investigator may move to Arkham. As an encounter, an investigator on unknown Kadath may unearth the secrets of the power that resides there, or law minus two. If they pass, he learns the name Niall Arthotep and departs quickly from the dreamlands. Complete this adventure. Fantastic. We have got Zoe on unknown Kadath. Brilliant. It's all coming together. Let's put that over here. Let's also spend one of these for a Moxie condition. Moxie is a talent, so it's in here with the boons and talents. Right, let's pull off the bottom so we get one. No, no, no. Have we got the right deck? Oh, here we go, Moxie. You may re-roll one die when resolving a will test. Once per round, if you would lose two or more sanity, prevent one of that sanity loss, then flip this card. Cool. Found it eventually. So there we go. And that is it for Tommy, I think. Oh no, we've got to move. Get this out of the way. And we will put the adventure token there. And that is it for Tommy. And that is it for the encounter phase. And what a turn it's been. Let's see what's going to happen on the laugh and chuckle phase. And here we are at the laugh and chuckle phase. So hopefully this won't be too bad. We've pretty much got this game in the bag, so long as this isn't bad. Let's flip it, and we've got a green cat of tentacles. Damn it! Well, first of all, we've got omen trap movement, so we go into a blue constellation, but we got rid of the gate on the underworld, so we're fine. Then we get a monster surge, but we're going to have to spawn a gate anyway, but that's okay, because we know where it is. It's Shanghai. So let's put this onto the board. There we go, and we need a monster. So the monster that we spawn is, let's get right to the bottom, it is, ooh, an elder thing. This is probably going down to Antarctica, is it? Yes, it is, but it's nasty, three toughness. You need three successes on a horror check to avoid losing any sanity, and you need two successes on the combat check to avoid losing any health. So that's going down to Antarctica. Let's sort that out. So, Elder Thing on Antarctica with the Expedition. Okay, so that is the gate sorted out. Clues. So at least we get two clues. And we could do with one in the Dreamlands if there are any left to go in the Dreamlands. And we get space 18. Where's that? That's down here. Southern Indian Ocean. And the next one is... Where's this going? It's a named one. Dilath Lean. <laughs> How lucky have we been this game? So we've got another clue in the Dreamlands, just where we need it, because we need to um, achieve research encounters. Right, so we've done that. Let's see what the bad tentacly thing is on this card. So. Pulling the curtains back slightly, you see that some suspicious man watching your you see a suspicious man watching your hotel. You're going to have to sneak out the back exit and try and lose him again. Strange sightings ongoing. Invest investigators cannot perform rest actions. Is that it? It's not tentacles. Well, that's about 
it'd be bad if you know we had somebody obviously on one sanity or one health but as it stands at the moment that's not too bad and we discard it on a reckoning so we've got strange sightings which is ongoing to sort of stand out for it i'll take that off take that off there and we'll put it up there with that other one corrupted business so we're gonna have a few of these kicking off if we actually get a reckoning at some point but that is it nothing else oh we could we just uh, we just don't rest that's all so that wasn't too bad and in fact the whole turn wasn't too bad was it it was an absolute doddle to be honest um i only think i failed uh, a couple of rolls i think was it zoe zoe failed a couple of rolls and even on that she still managed to sort of pass it because she still managed to free the people out of the cocoons and she still managed to uh, pick up the clue that was easy peasy what who else at glow she didn't even have to roll a dice so she <laughs> i mean we did um take a hit on the doom track but seeing as we were getting a clue on the mystery as well that was just a no-brainer so um yeah just an absolute breeze of a turn that is the i think that's the easiest turn i've ever had on eldritch and this is the easiest game of eldritch i've ever had i think we're gonna have to think about stepping up the difficulty somehow i mean you can play with just tentacle cards and things like that but i, I don't like doing that because i've paid for the whole game i like using the all the cards but uh, i think what we might do next time is we might play depending on take up we might play with either just three investigators or we'll play with five and um, we'll try and make it a little bit harder that way because this has just been an absolute doddle. I've rolled really well, fair enough, but all the players that we've got on this play-by video, they all know what they're doing and um, we've come up with some pretty good tactics and strategies and um, basically we're kicking its ass. Next turn, all we've got to do is get two more on the mystery and we've got mandy mandy's got clairvoyant spell so she should be able to get a research encounter done hopefully and she can put one of those clues onto the mystery and of course we've got zoe at unknown kadath where the adventure is and if you succeed at the adventure you add one to the mystery and it's all over and it's done and dusted so we are in an extremely strong position we've got clues all over the board we've got one rumor out but it's a we don't even have to bother with it and basically yeah it's just easy peasy man with any luck we will actually finish this next turn so unless if if i keep rolling like i'm rolling we will finish it next turn so we shall have to see uh, apologies about my voice it has been a bit up and down um i've had a few coughing fits along the way hopefully i'll be able to edit them out but um yes if uh, if you're wondering why my voice is up and down that is why so perhaps if i stopped wittering on and gave it a rest that might be a plan so thank you so much for watching thanks for all the views thanks for all the subscriptions thanks for all the likes and thanks for all the help and support as ever it is much appreciated thank you to everybody who's been up to board game links to upvote the site and everybody on bgg who has liked the videos or commented on the threads there thank you so much and as ever yeah if you've noticed me make a boo-boo or an error please let me know i will try and roll it back if i can so hopefully i haven't but i tend to make at least one or two an episode i'm sure uh, i'm sure i have so if i don't catch it in editing please let me know and i will try and fix it the best i can but that is it for turn eight of eldritch horror the dreamlands i hope you join me for turn nine it could be the final episode we shall see but until then this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo.